Hello, everyone. I'm here for one of my stories. This is Lindsay Dunn, and this is a special collab episode with my frenemies now, <laughs> now shipmates on the on the 1899. And I wish I had a mournful dirge to play, but we are here to talk about the Netflix decision to cancel 1899 before it could be episode two. Of course, joining me are the people that you've been hearing about. We have Introvoid, Steve Barnes, and Voidmaster Nate Dunn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Yay, thanks for having us. Yes, yes thank, thank you. you. So and we oh, I was yeah. gonna say, and we are bummed. Thanks for having us, and we are very bummed. Not episode <laughs> two. You said episode two. I guess that was a misnomer. You mean season two? Season they're, they're, two. They're yes. talking about not being renewed by Netflix. Maybe I'm. I'm not going to give up hope that it's like not going to ever be a season two. But Netflix is not going to be a season two provider for us. Mm -hmm. Unless they decide to bow to give the people what they want. I mean. Um, we're going to get on into that, but why we're here is discussing this decision that's been announced today. We found out about it through a statement that was released on Instagram, actually from the showrunners, Barn Baodar and Jan Fries, and they said basically that it's not, I had that pulled up and now I don't anymore, but basically it said it's not going to be renewed. Um, so we found about it through Bo's Instagram. Netflix hasn't said a peep. Is it too much to hope that this is all just a publicity stunt and to see how much the fans really want it? Have you guys considered that possibility or what are your, do you think it's Netflix never says anything and this is actually the final say? I think this is gospel. I think, I think it's cut and dry and over, unfortunately. Oh, that's it, guys. That's all we have to say then. Thanks. <laughs> guys, that was just one guy. I have a well, completely different opinion than him. Keep going, well, though, I'm, Nate. I mean, from people that I've, you know, talked to and that I've let people know about the podcast and things like that, while, Steve, I know you've talked about how well it did number-wise, I just don't think it has the reach that we want it to have. Um. I think it can be considered a little bit of a niche show. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, and we talked about in what the second episode of our podcast that it starts off and it is a, it is a slow grind in the beginning, right? Um, so I can't particularly see a whole lot of people fighting for something that maybe they didn't make it past the second episode of. But then again, on the contrary, it's the people that did Dark and you guys ran and rave about Dark all the time. So I don't know. I, I do know they hired this crew based on uh, the success, not success, but like the interest that Dark provided. So they knew what they were getting into. So it's not like they can't afford this show because season two is going to be more expensive than they thought. They knew exactly what they were getting into, and they're renting out the volume where they're doing all their filming at. So all their numbers are very steady, very solid. They have a solid crew all across the board. Something else is I don't want to I don't want to give up hope completely in Netflix because it's it's significant that Netflix hasn't released anything yet. Because it could be part of, the, part of the hype machine. And yes, there is a big hype machine. I've signed two different um, petitions personally. And I know there's probably more out there. And it's, it's getting a lot of talk right now. Even my daughter knows that 1899 is not getting renewed. Not from me, but just from her teenage social media network. So it's significant. Netflix could be gearing up for... <sighs> okay <laughs> I keep hearing say on these boards that Lindsay and I are part of on these Reddit boards and these Facebook boards people keep talking about 2099 
that's like a buzzword. It's also a hashtag 2099 that's out there 200 years after 1899. This is just something that is on the periphery. I'm, I belong to a bunch of different boards. I try not to get spoiled, but I see that 2099 a lot. So I'm wondering if maybe they're not going to renew 1899 and they will start 2099. Hmm. Unless 2099 is supposed to be related to whatever happens at the end of 1899 and mm -hmm. then Oh, like it would still, I guess, be under the 1899 banner. I don't know. I don't particularly. Lindsay, let's, I'm going to ramble. Lindsay, let's hear what you have to say. I wanted to ask Lindsay too. Do you know like some other shows that have jumped networks, like that have been canceled and like have jumped networks to other places, which is a possibility? The main two I, I heard about recently was the network, um, the show Manifest that, moved from i guess it was peacock maybe but it moved the the place it moved to was netflix and somebody was complaining today that there's only season four of manifest on netflix well that's because it was on another thing before and netflix is the one that saved it i mean there was cobra kai moved from youtube to netflix but that was considered a step up you know it wasn't getting watched on YouTube Red, so they moved it over to Netflix, and now it's one of the best-selling series on there, best, you know, rated. Um, and then the other one was the one that I mentioned. Oh, well, there's a big rumor now about Wednesday and how that might be moving right. from Amazon. It's all rumors so far somebody said it was fact today and i was like well where's the resource for this and it was the same clickbaity thing like maybe it will move to amazon prime um but i just thought it was interesting that the statement so far has been made from the show creators and a lot of the cast so i do think it's fairly clear that that is actually happening but i do find it interesting that in none of these articles Netflix hasn't said a word. Now, maybe that's normal for them and they never say anything, especially if people are going to be upset. But it just seemed a little odd to me that Netflix hasn't said anything. Usually when you run one of these pieces and it's a final thing, you get a resource, the people that are disappointed, and then you get a resource for, that explains like why we did it. And it, that's considered a well-rounded piece. So far, we ha that's a missing piece. So, some solid all. numbers though is every week we talk about the numbers, and tonight we're supposed to be recording our recap of episode seven, and we've been recording since day one, since the since this show has come out. Nate and I have been on it like from that first week, so it's only been seven weeks since this show has even been on the air. And in that seven weeks, it's become like the third highest viewest show based on numbers, not just on Netflix, but across the board. Number three, not just in the top 10, like people talk about, but it's in the top three. And it's just such a short amount of time after it's come out. And it just seems... Now, where did you get your numbers from? Uh... I'll let you know later in the episode because <laughs> I have the, I do have the links. Okay. Cause I have some numbers I was going to share a little bit uh, later, but might as well get them in now. Yep. Um, my resource Ooh. is from Netflix and swell. So this is a account that's specifically all about Netflix series and tracking the numbers. So um, he posted an article earlier today saying that, it said something to the effect of, usually I can look at the numbers and justify it, but in the case of 1899, I can't. Um, one of the things he cited was that Netflix invested $48 million into the series, yet there is another series that came out, The Sandman, and their budget was $165 million. So a lot of people are talking about the expense of the show being a factor 
that led to the cancellation because of the volume technology. However, the Sandman cost, you know, three times as much. And that was renewed. And he shared the hours for that on a chart. Um, I can link this article in the show notes, but it basically shows that the Sandman only did slightly better in viewership than 1899. And yet that show was renewed. So he just saying it doesn't make sense that based on the numbers, the viewership that, and the fact that this other show costs three times as much that that would be renewed and this one not. Did you want to, did you have something you wanted to throw in Steve or are you still roommating? No, no. I, um, I guess I didn't have anything to add to that. Okay. I mean, I think the numbers are fantastic. I'm looking at my screenshot that I saved and it says it's the Netflix is the Nielsen streaming content ratings and it lists the uh the networks that it is included Amazon Prime Disney Plus HBO Max Hulu Netflix and Apple TV so number one was Wednesday number two was dead to me number three was 1899 number four was the crown number five slumberland and these mm -hmm. are the numbers for 2020 oh I'm sorry for the week of November 21st to 27th eh Okay, so the first week. Now, this did say that for um, for the year 2022, that eight, 1899 was the eighth best first season series on Netflix in 2022, and uh -huh. it spent five weeks on Netflix global top 10 list. So those are some really good numbers, too. But, yeah, so it's it's not necessarily that, oh, yes, no one watched the show. You mentioned, Steve, about the success of Dark and how this show had a built-in audience coming into it that Dark mm -hmm. never had. Now, Dark sort of had a built-in audience because everybody watched Stranger Things in a weekend and wanted the next thing. And mm -hmm. this, was, this was marketed as, if you watch this, you might like this just because it started with a murder mystery, kid missing, power plant, kids on bikes, you know, all the tropes were there. So people thought, oh, this is a good match. However, Dark was a completely different horse than than Stranger Things. Both have performed really well. I believe, you know, Dark is is better, but a better overall show. But but that's because I like all the analysis and all of the time travel and all of the emotions and all of the all of the themes explored, which are basically the entire life experience. But we're not talking about dark. We're talking about 1899. So I will stop rambling. None of us are rambling. We're all good. Hey, those creators of this show are, you know, they're from Germany and they, you know, they created dark. They got 1899. It's a very steampunky show. I, I don't think I'm going on a limb here to say that it's, they're kind of punk rock. I mean, they kind of do their own thing. Their production team is tight. And I could for completely foresee this becoming like a German show, them going to a German production company and just doing a German show for season two, which I would be totally fine with. But mm -hmm. I could see them going with a smaller distributor for a smaller budget. I'd like to see them continue with this volume thing, but obviously it's expensive, but there's advantages to it. That's what I can't fathom is that netflix knew the budget for each season going in so there's no reason why they would cancel it based on the money unless all of a sudden they don't have as much money as they thought uh, they mm -hmm. put it all in bitcoin or something or on the blockchain perhaps what i don't know <laughs> now nate you came into the show not seeing dark and um what is it that intrigued you about the show or did Steve just completely arm wrestle you into doing this? I mean, um, Steve bullied me <laughs> for several weeks and said some things that I'm not allowed to repeat. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. now, honestly, um, this isn't my typical kind of show that I would watch. Um, my, TV preferences, my television preferences are, uh, to be blatantly honest, kind of quite childish. I love my cartoons. But, um, you know, I like things like Hannibal 
And that, for some reason, was the show that when I watched the trailer, they seemed to be shot in like a very similar way. And I was like, well, why not? Um, I guess that's kind of why I went, why I went for it. Because mm-hmm. it is, it is a dedication. It is a commitment to do something like that. So I do think you offer a unique perspective for you know the three of us discussing this. Steve and I are obviously like, you know, we're part of the cult. You know, we're part of the uh, the Bo and Yanya cult, and you offer a fresh perspective. So. I appreciated you at the very, very, very beginning saying, look, guys, maybe this just isn't cool enough to make it. Um, but I I just, I wondered if you had any thoughts other, other than, you know, what are your thoughts about this show and its appeal to a broad audience? Do you think it's just like, oh, it's only for nerds like you guys? Or, you know, what, what do you think? No. Uh, so with a fresh perspective on everything, I will say that first thing that comes to mind with the show is that it is a commitment. Like if I was just given the option to watch the show by myself, Steve had no bullying to be done or anything like that. Um, I probably would have put two episodes into it and then stepped away. Um, I think that while I enjoy television shows that are, you know, they can be a slow build and things like that, there's a lot of things that just turn off a regular old jerk off like me. Like, I think it was the very first, or it was our second episode when we talked about the first show. Thank God my roommate was there because uh, I wouldn't have known what to do with the subtitles. And I feel like a lot of people wouldn't think about something like that you automatically lose so much of that show from not watching it in the proper way. Um, It's a good and a bad thing. There are a lot of characters to this show. Sometimes people are more simple-minded where they just say, you know, I want one to three main characters and I can move on my merry way, where in this show you need to acknowledge all of them and everything that they're they're doing it's a show that you have to pay attention to you can't you can't just and that's beyond the language and things like that excuse me um you have to you have to pay attention to every character and what they're doing and who they're interacting with and i think for a lot of people that pushes them away from it um because there have been instances where you go from one episode to the next and you're like, well, I don't, I don't know why this person is doing this. And then you just, you kind of have to play catch up with yourself. And that's not always the best. Um, and then again, we haven't finished the show yet. None of us have the, between the three of us, at least. Um, I think the payoff moments aren't as big as a lot of people would want them to be. Like the moments where we figure something out and we're like, oh, okay, like this and this go together. We appreciate it because we haven't just been watching the show, just binging it just to get through it, so to speak. We're, we're taking a more uh, analytic approach. <clears throat> and for me personally, when we find things out, it is interesting. There are definitely things where you go, uh, you know, oh crap for lack of a better phrase, but there are some, some things where it's like, okay, well, I know that this is a big deal, but it doesn't hit like it's supposed to be a big deal. Or it's, or it's not as big of a deal as it should be. And I think that for a lot of the common folk like myself, sometimes you go, eh, I don't really need to do something like that. I don't need to, I don't need to watch something like that. That's why 
with talking about numbers and things like that, I think that it does have really good numbers. You guys have both provided excellent examples of that. But you also have to think how many people just watch shows to just watch the show. The people that are able to binge it and they just go, great. And it's hard to quantify and get a general feeling for like, positive reviews versus negative reviews because one there's so many different places that you can catch the reviews at but that's that's what i would look at can have a lot of a lot of views and things like that but if the general feeling for the show itself is negative i can see why netflix chose to not renew it mm-hmm I don't think it was. I don't think it got negative feedback at all. That's not the gist that I got whatsoever. How about yourself, Lindsay? Like your circles? yeah, I've seen people. There's a lot of comparing on social media. We have the dark stands and that are just all about anything these creators make. But then we had plenty of people also chiming in and saying, even on the 1899 fan site, we had people saying. Um, well, I agree with this decision. The show just wasn't as good or dark is greater than 1899 and, you know, wanting to compare them when well, these yeah, are, I... these are two separate animals. So, I mean, there was, yeah. there was feedback. Most people who talk about dark rave about it. They, they might complain that they need a PhD uh, to understand it and it makes them feel inferior, <laughs> you know, but they, um, but I did hear people saying, eh, this show is just, eh. And like one thing Anthony brought up, and he's been the one I've been going through the recaps with, but one thing he brought up is that we have these kind of cliffhangers and then you ignore them for the next couple episodes. So <laughs> then the, in the second episode, or I don't know, can't even remember now, because the first or second episode, we had all the television screens and they end on that big cliffhanger, like, oh, th there's somebody watching everybody like it's on a television. And you're thinking, well, next episode, we're going to find out more about that. Nope, didn't even, <laughs> didn't touch it at all. Um, so he found that very frustrating because he wanted to know what's going on with the television screens. Sure, that's exactly like Lost, like where, you know, they would end on a cliffhanger with Sawyer's story, and then the next episode would all be about Jack, and then, like, that cliffhanger has to wait for a couple episodes. So, I mean, I think shows do that, and I also wanted to say I agree with the dark is greater than 1899. Absolutely it is. It's a better show, and it's also complete. I never, I guess what I was trying to say is I never saw anybody saying, this show sucks. I saw people saying, this show is pretty cool. It's not as cool as Dark, but it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Or you had people like like myself that are like, I I really like this 1899 seems like it's my, it's made for my palate, basically. I don't, <clears throat> I don't particularly do a lot of research outside of our podcast and things like that, but from comments and things that I've seen, it seems like this is just a show of comparisons because <laughs> you're getting, well, it is. I mean, you're getting, yeah, it is. people are trying to compare it to Dark, to Lost, which I never watched Lost, but um, The Matrix, yep. it's it's got so many comparisons and those shows are all in the past or movies are in the past. They're old. People have watched them a hundred times and so on and so forth. And like themes are reoccurring and that's fine, but it's, what did you do to bring light to that theme that makes me go, oh man, I got to see that. And I'm just not sure if 1899 for the common folk, mm -hmm. I just don't know if it's, if it's done that quite yet. Watch your mouth. Yeah. Watch your mouth. What, what do you got for me, Steve? Come on. <laughs> I don't know. I just love it so much. I want to beat you up for saying anything <laughs> negative. Well, I mean, you know that I still like the show. It's yes, just I'm trying. I'm trying to. Do. I'm just trying to take it from that step back. I haven't been doing a podcast for six or seven weeks with you. <laughs> like I'm just. I'm trying to those those fresh right. those fresh eyes. I do kind of wonder if you know, as far as other reasons, we've talked about the numbers. We could talk about the plagiarism accusation, but let's just forget no. that because it's kind of dumb. 
It's based but, on nothing. <laughs> I do believe that perhaps the world of binging is ruining television in general, which let's see, Netflix kind of started that whole thing. They also were the ones that encouraged people to share accounts. They had some kind of sharing is caring thing. And now they're wanting everyone to stop sharing accounts and are trying mm -hmm. to crack down on that. It kind of, you know, on a very small scale, um, it kind of reminds me of what happened with like movie <laughs> The trash fire known as Movie Pass, which, you know, we don't have to talk about that too much either. But everybody loved that model, but it just wasn't sustainable. Right. Netflix was, when Netflix started, it was the only, it was the king of the castle. You know, nobody else was in the game. Now they're sort of like throwing everything at the wall to see if it sticks and to say like, how can we keep making money and making this feasible? So they've increased their catalog. They're making original content, but is it? all that good and they're sort of churning out things like mincemeat and a grinder and it's just like anything as long as people watch it well a lot of people only want to watch one season somebody uh, one of my friends tweeted today maybe netflix should just do limited series from now on one season and that's it because you can't cancel it if there's only one season but perhaps the days of well-made multi-season dramas are over as far as Netflix is concerned. We have Apple TV now that has a very small catalog, but pretty much everything they have in there is completely solid. Um, most, most people just complain they don't have that much stuff. But with Netflix, they just have so much now. Of course, you know, if that was that way, then we'd never have Dark, we'd never have Stranger Things, we'd never have Cobra Kai, but those shows are are thriving and still doing well. So I, I wonder if just the way people, it, and it made me really sad, and I will finish this diatribe soon, and then you guys can chime in, but it made me really sad and almost a little bit nauseous to how once 1899 came, everybody was like, they watched it in one day or one weekend, and then they're like, when's season two? You didn't even really digest it. I did think about all the things that we have in our slower, you know, thing, we've been able to pick up on details that maybe were missed and really savor the show. And, but that, that doesn't seem to be the model. And then of course the numbers aren't that great. Um, I mean, they're, they're okay. We showed, but compared to other things, Netflix doesn't just want to see it had a great opening weekend or a great three or four week run. They want to see consistency, but people watched it right away. And so then they've just moved on to the next the next thing yeah amazon does that model where they'll release episodes at a time which is why one of the reasons i chose wheel of time is because that show is released weekly and um you know i'm used to the game of thrones model the weekly thing so yeah i totally agree i don't like this release in the season all at once even though you know my wife heather she she loves that model that she is a binger that model was designed for her and it works with her brain. With my brain, it does not. I want to watch the show, watch it a couple of times before I watch the next episode instead of it just auto rolling on over. Um, I think there could be um, some, I mean, the three of us can't do this, but it'd be great if the networks like Amazon is the network that releases weekly shows and so is HBO. If you want to do your binge drops, you go to Hulu and you go to Netflix and it would be great if Hulu and Netflix within that model adopted like the BBC model, which is exactly what you were talking about. Shows would have six episodes, one season. I'm thinking things like um, The Office is the first thing that comes to mind or um, the one that Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright did, Spaced. You know, there was just one season, one show, one and done. And if they got picked up for another season, great, but they never planned on it. I would like to see that model adopted where they don't get our hopes up like this and make us angry. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's another thought I had, which is sometimes format determines function. Um, I'm not sure if that phrase really works with what I'm trying to say here, but in the case of me, for instance, I had started, I wanted to do a podcast and couldn't figure out how to do a podcast. So I started a YouTube channel. 
to talk about Cobra Kai stuff and my friend Eric, we were talking about that, about how it was going. And he said, you know, I just don't think you're a YouTuber. And he said it completely nice, but he's like, YouTube people want quick hits. They're not the audience for the analytical stuff. You need to start a podcast. And I was like, I don't know. So, <laughs> yay, I finally figured out how to get on there. Um, so maybe I'll I'll find a stronger audience. But I do wonder with these creators and the way their brains work, are they better suited for movies than TV? Could be another way to look at this. If you think it like... You can you can disagree as soon as I get this out. But um, I was thinking of David Lynch, who's one of my favorite directors of all time. He did Twin Peaks, did two seasons, 25 years later. Well, he, he threw in a movie, Fire Walk With Me. Then 25 years later, he released season three, The Return, which was released as a series. But he calls it an 18-hour movie. I mean, so... It is possible that 1899, the story could be completed just in a different way and in a different time schedule than we would want. But I also think patience is a virtue. And if you think about things like Top Gun Maverick, you know, that it took 36 years for that sequel to be made and everybody wanted it. Um, everybody was complaining about it. I don't want to be 75. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe maybe not a one-to-one -one comparison, but I'm just saying just because the season, yeah, I'm not saying Netflix is going to make season two, but they could make a movie or, you know, finish the story in their own production company another time. But Steve, you're shaking your head about my idea about them being better at movies. So tell me, like, what, what do you see with that? Um, The way my brain has... Um slips as i've gotten older i've become more prone to read books or watch television series i don't like um movies as much as i used to i don't i i guess maybe it's like the uh the commitment or maybe it's just the fact that like once i watch the movie for that 90 to 100 minutes that the story is over uh i just i i don't like that model the uh the movie model i like the series model and when you were talking about that particular series the one that came to mind for me was fargo because it does the same thing it wraps up like a story within one season and then you wait for a few years and then <laughs> there comes another season and it wraps up another story um i wouldn't mind seeing 1899 go that model i could wait two or three more years for them to get their shit together their stuff together excuse me and give us another season on another platform or whatever i'm not giving up hope I, you know that's why i'm not too upset about this whole thing and even if it doesn't come uh i've enjoyed this i've invested i figured out we were talking about the time investment uh five six Yes, yeah, seven hours per week is what I invest in my podcast doing 1899, including watching, taking notes, recording, and editing. So I don't want that to be all for nothing, but at the same time, I enjoy doing it. And I enjoyed this show and I enjoyed doing it with Nate. So even if there is no more 1899, it was still a fun experience while it was. And but I'm not giving up hope. I think there's going to be a season two. I really do. Mm-hmm. Case closed. Gavel, gavel. So, Nate, what do you think of, of the movie idea? Or do you watch many movies, or are you more of a TV person? I, <clears throat> I enjoy horror movies. Um, I could... I could see if there was a big enough push that they could possibly independently release something. And then that would just be the cut and dry end of the whole, the whole shebang. Um, call me pessimistic, but I don't particularly see that happening. And I just, I just don't know if I see it going anywhere else. 
I just don't know if there's another format that the studio could take it to or another distributor or streaming service or whatever it would be. I just, I just don't, I just don't know unless, unless maybe you guys are right. And maybe, uh, Maybe Netflix did keep it, and this is just some crazy big conspiracy thing, right? Well, if fun. it's if it's uh twenty, if you said the next series was going to be called twenty ninety nine, you said you didn't want to wait thirty six years, but they could technically wait two hundred yeah. years and, and make that sequel, Steve. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there is that movie that John Malkovich just did. I think it's not a movie. I think it's more like a bourbon commercial. But it's like that 100, that movie he's going to release in 100 years. Have you guys heard about this? No. No? no? Yeah, check it up. Check it out when we're done. It's like, mm. it's it's a movie that has already been done, already been wrapped, starring John Malkovich. And it's going to be released in 100 years, along with a bottle of scotch or whatever that's been aging for that whole time. That's why I say it's like, some kind of promotional tie-in, but yeah, that's kind of a neat concept. And I saw so some he's neat stories about that. He, surely he's not expecting to still be alive. Then he's going to choose. No, his... that's correct. It's in a time sensitive. You'll read if you read the story. It's in like a time sensitive vault, and he's like bequeathed like certain people, certain relatives or ancestors of certain other people. To it's a real thing. They're going to release it in one hundred years. It's a real mm -hmm. thing. Looks in. I love John Malkovich. He's a weirdo. So we're coming probably towards the end of when we need to cut this off, but I did want to let our viewers know what does this mean for us as content creators as far as 1899 content goes? What are what are our plans? I already know what you guys are sort of planning, but go ahead and share so people can hear it from the horse's mouth. Me or you, Nate? It's all you, man. Okay. Uh, we're Yeah, we're definitely going to continue with um, recapping seven and eight, episodes seven and eight. And then we're also going to do a season retrospective. Once we've watched all the episodes, we're going to go back and watch. We're going to go back and binge them all again, or at least I am going to binge them all again um, to get like a fresh perspective from them. Because I haven't gone back and rewatched anything. I only rewatched the episodes as they come out. So, okay, when me and Nate are done with that, then I'm going to move on to um, re-watching season one of Wheel of Time with my co-host James, because Wheel of Time season two is going to be coming up in the next few months. I was hoping that after Wheel of Time season two finished, that we would be chasing the tail of the next season of 1899 season two, that the timing would work out that way. It doesn't look like that's going to be the case. But at any rate, uh, for the future, I plan to get together with you again, Lindsay, once you finish watching it all and we finish watching it all. Hopefully we can all get together and do this again and talk about, you know, what we thought of that whole season. And as for what I'm going to do after Wheel of Time season two, and I have to wait for like three years between them and there's no 1899, I thought about going back and redoing Dark, doing a recap podcast of that because I did not do a recap podcast of it when I watched it before. I just semi binged it i would watch like two episodes at a time kind of deal and there's a lot about dark that i don't want to say went over my head but it went over my head and there's a lot of things i didn't catch and the way to catch those things is to multiple view it recap it talk about it with somebody else and they're going to notice things that you didn't notice just like nate does so perhaps i'll do that Perhaps I'll go back in time and do like a little house on the prairie one who knows i've talked about that with certain friends but I, I would really like to do 1899, but I'll just have to find <laughs> other shows to do, man. You know, 1899, baby, I keep holding out hope. Well, I also am going to finish out my recaps. I'm recording episode four today, and I still have four more to go, four more to enjoy. Um, yes, after that, I think we talked about maybe talking about the making of 1899 yes e either or that or the respective or both uh hey if you do a dark recap podcast you can call on me and you know i'd be happy to join you for that i think you already probably know that but i fully intend to keep making my content making my written written recaps and 
I'm joining in the petitions and I'm also not going to give up hope and and hope that this see this show somehow gets completed, whether it's a crowdfunding or you know something in the future or uh, somebody remaking it on their on their cell phone uh 1899 <laughs> fan fiction <laughs> i would I'm, I'm for all of it uh because we would like to get to enjoy this story longer i'm i'm like you steve i just enjoyed it and i'm glad i met you too also it wasn't for 1899 we wouldn't be here enjoying this zoom room whatever you want to call it so. Yeah, we're on we're on one of my stories right now, but yeah, I never I kept talking about our podcast. We recap blah blah blah, but I never said the name of it. It's Sweet Child of Time, y'all. Sweet Child of Time is my podcast that I do with Nate and also with James and Lindsay. We've adopted her as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, I I should have said that. And actually, I was going to I was going to do a nice little wow 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 sweet child of time whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> sing you a little uh welcome tune and i forgot to do that as well so <laughs> here we did it but yes it's the sweet child of time podcast and this is our collab so we're both going to release it doesn't belong to me it belongs to all of us on the good ship kerberos <laughs> yes <laughs> not the prometheus no we left it behind <laughs> we're kerberos people <laughs> So far, I still haven't <laughs> finished the show. <laughs> so, um, Nate, is there anything you want to promote before we say goodbye? Um, what will you be doing nope. after you're done with your <laughs> with your? Yeah, I'm curious journey. to hear that too. After I'm done with 1899. Mm -hmm. Oh man, it's very stereotypical, but I'm probably gonna start Yellowstone. Okay. Probably Great. probably do Yellowstone and uh, I don't know. I guess I'll just be working enough. I heard a rumor you might be starting a podcast or is that not for public consumption yet? Oh, um, we haven't really talked too in depth about it with this whole move and things like that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know if there's too many details. It would be me and the gentleman from, uh, he's from Washington that he builds my guitar pedals. Um, it'll just be, if you like all the obnoxious banter that I give Steve and the side comments, you'll probably love this podcast, but we'll just talk about music and odds and ends and stuff that only two obnoxious dudes could care about. <laughs> oh, it's about pedals. So you could call it like, Pedal head, metal heads, or something like that. I'm, I'm thinking of names for you already. <laughs> We're going to be talking about everything. Some music stuff, some just, you know, it's two, just imagine two guys sitting around a table drinking beer, talking yeah. about everything. Mm -hmm. Hey, I heard um, you say Yellowstone. Let's recap Yellowstone. Idea ooh, just came up in my head. Let's, let's not do that, man. I don't, I don't, <laughs> look. I, I did admittedly watch the first episode and I was like, oh, geez, geez, why is this episode an hour and a half long? <laughs> now, the first episode is like an hour and 36 minutes or something like that. I was like, this, this is a movie. Thankfully, mm -hmm. the other episodes are only like an hour, but mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Well, since it looks it looks like the ship's ready to go off the rails now with, with we're uh, ready to talk about Yellowstone. So <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go ahead and pull this ship to a close and bid you all good night and adieu. Bon voyage. <laughs> bon voyage and arrivederci. I don't know what other <laughs> languages we can say it in, but thank you very much for having us. Alrighty. Um, thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs> See ya.